What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're checking out Wayward. This is one of those games that I've checked out like numerous times on this channel because I actually think the game is pretty good. However, we haven't played it in like a year or two and so it's had a lot of updates since those days. If you don't know what this game is, it's effectively a turn-based, true-to-form roguelike that really, really focuses on survival and crafting. And so, like, you guys know that I really like survival games that don't really incorporate monsters and sort of take, like, a purist approach. This game does have monsters, and it does have dungeons, and it does have combat, but the survival in it is just so good, and there's so many things to work on and so many things to do, that I really do think that this game is worth your notice. So without further ado, let's go ahead and we will start off a game here. I'm gonna make a new character. I've been playing Stone Mop in my own free time because, you know, she's got that hair right there. We'll make a new character so that you guys can see the character customization. Apparently this guy's name is Ephraim. Alright. Well, we can go with like a different, let's go with like a different hairstyle. We can have like a fro. Dude, I'm feeling the fro. We should definitely have the fro. Although the shaved head looks pretty good too. Well, they also have like a mohawk. I gotta do the mohawk. I can't help myself. When they give me the mohawk, I have to do the mohawk. So we'll go like with the mohawk right there. He kind of looks like I did when I graduated from college. I had like a big like foot long mohawk when I graduated from college. I let it grow for like a, a year and a half actually. That was back in the day. I, I'm a fan of the hawks. It's unfortunate that I'm like 33 now. Because like, it's tough to be a 33 year old man with a mohawk, you know what I mean? Like, when you're a 33-year-old dude with a mohawk, I feel like there's certain assumptions that start to be made about your person. You're expected to have, like, a very conservative haircut by the time you get to that age, because you're supposed to have, like, a job and stuff. Luckily, I work on the internet, so it doesn't really matter. But, you know, uh, this guy's name is going to be Kick a Craft, because we're going to find a craft, and we're going to kick it. Let's start the game. Uh, big warning, there's a good chance we might die really fast in this playthrough. This game is, like, hyper deadly. Oh, look, we found some twigs on the ground. We found twigs. What is this right here? We've got some batter locks. A stringy, wet mess of seaweed can be used for cordage or eating in desperation. Okay. Uh, we've started out with a couple of things inside of our inventory. Let's kind of go over the UI because I think that's a really good place to start. This game can be really, really intimidating for new players, but I promise you if you put like two or three hours into it, you'll start doing everything just kind of intuitively. It just takes time. The game is actually arrayed in a really nice, easy to understand way. It's just that it hits you with a lot straight off the bat. Uh, so anyways, we can move around with the wasp keys. The game keeps track of your turns, so we're on turn 18 right now. Rotating your facing doesn't really affect your turn at all, but if you move it does. We got four meters over here. We got our health, we've got our stamina, we've got our hunger, and then we've also got our thirst. We've started the game out with a tattered shirt, tattered pants, a bedroll, those are the tree barks that we just picked up. We also have a couple of rocks. We have some raspberries. We have some chive seeds, just in case we wanted to grow some chives. We've got a string. We've got a wooden pole. We've got a stone pickaxe, which is pretty nice. We've got a wooden mortar and pestle for making kind of herbalism stuff. We've got a moss-covered book right here. Every time you spawn into the game, you'll spawn in with like a different book that sort of like, I guess, explains the lore of the world. Kind of gives you an idea that maybe you're not on a really, you know, normal island. Perhaps this place is a little bit unique. Uh, we have the materials right now to make a stone hammer. I would suggest that we do that. There we go. So we've made the stone hammer. Other things you want to watch out for. This is your overall reputation. Now, the reputation system is kind of a weird thing in this game. But the developer seems to be really, really, like, married to it. And I don't mean that in a bad way. It just seems like maybe this is something that's going to be developed more later in the game's life cycle. But as of right now, it does affect things. So you have two different stats. You have your benignity, and then you have your malignity. Uh, your benign is basically all of the good things you do. So killing bad monsters, so like skeletons, things of that nature. Certain creatures that you kill will increase your benign nature. And then a lot of activities, anything that negatively affects the island, like you chopping down trees, or you mining the stone away, or anything else like that, tends to also give you malignity. Uh, these two stats matter. If you've got a lot of benign, essentially what'll happen is the monsters or the creatures, the normal wildlife on the island will become much more... They'll become much more docile and less likely to attack you. Um, and then you also have a lesser chance to spawn nastier stuff while you're trying to sleep or at nighttime when the game gets dangerous. Whereas if your malignity is very, very high, it basically just makes the game a lot harder. 
There's a lot of different ways that people play this game to get around those two stats. Uh, some people just like ignore it and just do whatever they want and come what may. Like if bad things happen, then bad things happen. Other people like really try to balance it on out and make sure that they live as kind of like a patron or servant of the land, I guess. And that means that, you know, they're always going to focus on tending everything and planting new trees and keeping the island beautiful. They're going to end up with a very, very positive score or a very, very positive stat. People that run around just exploiting and destroying everything and building houses and lighting fires and all that kind of stuff, they're going to get a lot of malign. And they're going to struggle with monsters a lot more, but the monsters don't really matter if you can get yourself over to, like, decent gear. Like, a lot of the early game, mid game monsters can be pretty easily defeated so long as you've got decent gear uh, for now in order to keep our stats kind of like where they are i'm gonna wander around for a little bit and we're just gonna pick things up we've got a remarkable fossil that apparently i can do something with i can turn it into carbon powder you'll also note that when i was making that hammer right there our tinkering level was increasing we now have three percent tinkering knowledge and so everything in this game has an associated stat or an associated skill that you can take part in uh, can i gather coconuts from this well, it gave me palm fronds. I don't know if this has... Does it have coconuts? It's in its budding stage of growth. Oh, I should have looked at it first. Okay, we've got another one of those seaweeds over here, though. Let me go grab this seaweed real fast. We're going to need it for cordage. There we go. Hey. Yep, let me grab that. And then it looks like there's a stick out in the water. I'm going to go grab that real fast, too. So we've got a stick, and we've got a number of things. What we need to do right now is we need to dismantle this stick. That will give us some strip bark, which we can use for cordage. It'll give us some leaves, and it'll give us some twigs. For right now, that's not really what I'm interested in. I'm interested in getting the stripped bark so that I can make myself some cordage. Because if we can make some cord, we can actually get some new stuff. So what you might be thinking is like, hey, I think my first thing that I should probably get my hands on is more than likely like a weapon or something like that, right? Probably a good idea. We'll make a stone spear. I'm going to put the stone spear in my left hand. You can activate which hand you want to fight with based on left and right. So this is your left hand. This is your right hand. Uh, it took me a second to sort that out and figure out what was going on. I basically had to sacrifice a playthrough to figure it out. But it does correlate with the button on each side. I figured since most people are dominant right-handed, this would be the right hand, this would be the left hand since it can hold a shield. But nope, your character is left-handed in this game. So just something to keep in mind. You can also activate what weapons you want to be using. So you can have two things in your hands at a time. So if I put like this stone hammer in my hand, I can activate and deactivate which thing I want to use pretty easily. I'm going to put this in my quick slot real fast. We'll throw that up there. Looks good. We've got a little bit more bark on this side. For now, we're just going to forage. I, I don't see a whole lot of reasons to do anything crazy. Uh, I'm going to gather exceptional button mushrooms. Oh, it's not ready to go yet. It's in its spreading stage of growth. That's in a young stage of growth. Okay. We've got beggar ticks over here. Don't know what that is. I think it's a tree of some kind, isn't it? It's like a beggar tick tree or something like that. I don't recall. What is that? Oh, it's rocks and stuff off the ground. Nice. Okay, I'll take that. That's good to have. You can also zoom out if you're having trouble like seeing things. You can zoom in. So like don't just be aware that there's things you can do in this game that UI wise. Ooh, apples. We want those. I want those. Uh, let's use our right hand to gather some apples. The good news is gathering apples is super good. So that actually raised us up by quite a lot. And our skill in botany went up to almost 14%, which is pretty wild. Uh, you get a bunch of reputation for picking and eating apples. So I would just live off the land for a little bit and just like graze. You also get reputation for eating the apples. This game really does reward you for living off the land and kind of just playing it safe. Come on, give me the apples. There we go. So now we're at 45 positive, which is a really, really good thing because I'm not trying to pick any fights right now. I would early on identify where all the apple trees are around your starting area. Apples are a fantastic source of food in this game. They're really, really good for you. I think that coconuts are better, and I think there's also like a dragon fruit or something like that that you can get your hands on, but I don't have too much experience in that regard. But for now, I just want to explore. I want to look around. I want to see what the island has available to us. There's a pretty good chance that we might die while we're doing this, just because it's really easy in this game to wander into a patch of monsters and then just get annihilated. But for now, there's a bone on the ground right there. There's some twigs some twigs. I'll probably dig up some of these rocks right here. 
Yeah, let's grab those. We've got a large rock and some stones. That's good. We're going to need more stones, trust me. Uh, we're going to need to flint nap some of this stuff. What's up inside this little area? Be careful about these little cave areas. Sometimes they have monsters in them. It's not really a cave, but it's like a stony pass. This right here is the entrance to the dungeon. The island will have a dungeon on it where you can dive down in and kind of do your thing. There's going to be treasure down in there. There's going to be monsters that are actually pretty gnarly. Oop, that's a rat right there. We don't want to fight him. He's going to try and fight me, though. I got a feeling. Leveling up your combat in this game is a really, really good idea, but you kind of want to do it in a controlled environment. What's that right there? Obsidian? You cannot gather anything from the obsidian. Okay, that's fine. I wanted to try it out, though, and see what happens. Let's travel through this little rocky pass right here. We have our bed with us, so, like, we really don't have a home. I actually kind of highly recommend that you play this game nomadic at the beginning and just sort of, like, walk around a lot. Like, building a house and, like, a base and, like, walls and protective things is cool and everything, but, like, it's going to take you a lot of materials to get that done, and the island doesn't like it when you chop down, like, tons of trees and, like, start causing all kinds of problems. So, really, you want to get your reputation up really, really high, and then... You can start working on, you know, taxing the island for luxuries like a house, a home, tre like treasure chests to store your stuff in. For now, it's just easier to exist with all of this stuff on your back. Is that a sharp stone right there? I want that. Give it to me. That sharp stone is useful to me. All right, so we've got sharp stones. I'm going to eat some more apples because our hydration is looking a little bad right now. I do have a way to purify water, so it's not really that big of a deal. If you find these little puddles of fresh water over here, you can put them inside of the flask that you started out with and then boil them over a fire and you'll be all right. But for now, not really something I'm trying to dedicate a lot of time to. Uh, yeah, I'll pick that up. I don't know what it is. So we've got stones right there. I don't actually know what stones use for crafting. I'm going to make a sharp rock. And then after making the sharp rock, what am I missing right now? I don't have a pole. So we got to find a stick around somewhere. What is that right there? A spruce tree. It's currently ripening. Okay, that's cool. I'm doing the same thing right now in my chair because I never go outside and I never bathe because that's a benefit that I have earned as a YouTuber. All right? That's what I've earned. This is what we do out here. We never bathe. We never shave. We just hang out and cut gameplay videos all day long because the internet has enabled us. That's the goal, chat. That's the goal. Go start your own YouTube channel today so you can be like me and never wear anything but pajamas ever again for the rest of your life. That was the whole reason we started this trip. That's why we got on the boat. It's just a really, really enhanced dedication to avoiding... Oh, there's a goat over there. Goats can headbutt you. Be careful. The goats can be kind of a meanie face. There's a rat over there. There's a sandstone right there. Okay. Well, let's keep on trucking. I'm still looking for things that are, like, laying around on the ground that I can get my hands on. But I don't think we're going to be that lucky. I think we may actually have to damage nature a little bit to get the stuff that we need. I'm not seeing any sticks or anything around. I haven't found a single stick, unfortunately. Well, we found that one that was out in the ocean, but that was the only one. As you can see, there's a bunch of sharks, too. Uh, we should probably not go inside of there. That's a house, but when we open that, there's going to be a badass monster inside of there. I guarantee you. I promise, I promise there's a big badass monster inside of there and it's going to kill you like instantaneously. Let's see here. The scorpion stinger still contains venom. I don't think I've ever found a scorpion stinger before. That's a new acquisition for me. That's a new item. Well, so far, not a lot of luck. I was hoping we would find some other things that would make this all kind of easier. But I may have been, like, markedly overestimating what we were going to find laying around on the ground. The good news is we aren't dead, which is something to be spoken of. Like, the ooh, an animal skull. Nice. Can I make that into a skull helmet? Yeah, make that into a skull helmet real fast. So we've made that into a skull helmet. Unfortunately, the island really, really, really did not like that. The island was not a fan. But you know what? The island's going to have to get on board because I need to have a helmet. Uh, this right here is actually going to give you one defense, which is nice. It'll defend you from slashing attacks, if nothing else. It's getting kind of dark out right now. I think we are somewhat on the back end of the day. Well, in light of the fact that we haven't really found anything, I think we're just going to get started with crafting the best that we can. Uh, so what I'll do 
is I need to get some sticks. It's going to hurt, but I need them. Oh, God, what is that thing? I don't know what that is, but it bit me. I don't know what it is, but it bit me. A nature story with Splattercat. And we've killed the rat, so that's good. We got attacked by a rat, and we managed to, like, one-shot him, and it gave us 150 reputation. The other cool thing is if we harvest this guy, we'll get a bunch of free reputation from it, too. There we go. So we're only at minus 12 for right now. To put that in perspective, both of these meters go up to 64,000. So we're really not doing that badly. We did survive a combat, which is pretty cool. Oh, I'm dying of dehydration. That's not good. Let me drink some water. There we go. And we are going to have to do some stuff that I don't really want to do. So let's go ahead and drop all of that real fast. Uh, one thing that I do think we're going to need. We only got one stick from that tree. Brutal. Okay, well, let's dismantle it. And now that we've got that, I'm going to make myself an axe. There we go. We've got an axe. That's good to have. Where's the axe at? The axe is right there. We're going to put that on our two slot. I don't know what that thing is, but it seems very, very hostile and very, very upset with me. But we need to gather some more water, so I'm going to kind of like move along. We may have problems. I'll be honest with you. We may have issues. There's the water, though, that we were looking for, so I can take that and I can gather water inside of my flask. Our visibility is a little bit limited right now because it's so dark. I've also lost my fire pile, which is kind of a bummer. I was making a fire pile over there for a reason, but, you know, such is life. Let's go ahead and chop down some trees. Oh, he's back. I guess he's following me, or maybe he's a spawn. I don't know. Oops, I killed a giant rat again. Well... I'm not going to leave his goodies behind. Let's see here. A wriggling creature with a massive claw mouth. Can I kill it? Oh, nice. Well, that wasn't so bad. Oh, never mind. He's not dead. He just moves around. Okay. We'll keep fighting him. It's kind of a reasonable opportunity for us to level up our combat skills. And plus, we got a whole bunch of... Ooh, nice. What did he give me right there? Is that worm meat? What was that? Worm meat. Essentially a mash of worm innards, almost ground up into a paste. Not appetizing, but can be cooked for a better flavor. Good. Well, we're going to need that. So let's go back to our fire pile now that we've killed the worm. We're a little bit beat up. I was going to say, I know it's over here somewhere. And then what I need to do is we're going to dismantle both of these sticks. And we're just going to take the reputation hit. And what we need to make is we need to make a fire plow, I think. What item's going to be destroyed? Oh, my cutting tool might be destroyed. Okay, that's fine. I don't really mind that much. So we've made ourselves a fire drill now. Or I guess a fire plow. A fire drill is where you take the stick and you rotate it towards the tip to get it hot. A fire plow is where you take basically a flat piece of wood and you put the kindling in a little ditch at the end and then you take the stick and you push it with both hands forwards and backwards along the bottom of the basin of that piece of wood until it lights. Both methods are incredibly ineffective unless you super know what you're doing. If you super know what you're doing, you may pull it off. But if you don't super know what you're doing, both of those methods of starting a fire are actually really, really difficult. We're going to put that over there on our four key. There we go. We lit a fire. Oh, dude, not a spider. I don't want to deal with a spider right now. Uh, let's purify our water real fast just so that we've done that. I'll probably make the cooked worm meat, too, so that we have something to eat. We could try to mash out some pemmican. Uh, what'll happen is if, in order to make the pemmican, we have to use up our brains that we took from the rat and also the tainted meat, but it will purify it. There we go. So we pulled it off. Actually, we can make two of them. Nice. So we got two pemmicans now. We actually have a decent amount of food for once. That's good. Uh, I'll probably drink this right now. That spider will more than likely be an issue for later. I'm not going to panic about him just yet. But I think there was more water over here, which I think we're kind of hard up for right now. Was there? Well, let's chase back to my fire by the giant spider, which I think is still following us. Let me just kind of hang out for a second to see if he shows up. He did not. He hasn't showed up yet. 
I kind of figured he would be here shortly. Oh, there he is. There he is. There he is. All right. Come on. We got to kill him before we get poisoned. That's always the big risk with spiders. They can poison you, and poison can absolutely eat all of your health in this game if you're not careful. And we've gotten better at tactics, which is great. We've gotten a little bit better at anatomy, which is also cool. I guess I'm like a spiderologist now. Oh, dude. There we go. Make the spider meat. I was going to say, spider meat doesn't even give you that much sustenance, but I wanted to get our cooking skill up. Once we get a little bit higher, we're going to fail a lot less at a lot of this stuff. So don't be too panicky about it for right now if you kind of feel like you're not succeeding at your crafts as often as you would like to because you keep like licking things and breaking things and putting things in places where they shouldn't be. You know, you're like, who knew that shoving a stick all the way up into your nose was not how you crafted an axe? I get it. It's kind of dark out here. Can't even see what I'm fighting. I personally was sort of hoping to find some water down here somewhere. I don't like the fact that we only have the one water jug to work with. We're going to have to work on that late. There we go. There's some more water. There we go. So we will take the water jug. We will gather that water right there. That is risky water, so keep that in mind. That's not water you want to like immediately shove in your face right this second. You might end up with Jardia, and there's nothing fun about Jardia. I know it sounds like a really fancy sparkling water brand, but I promise you that it's not. It really sincerely isn't. I didn't really want those, but okay. It's kind of an accident. Didn't mean to touch that. Didn't mean to touch that either. Apparently, the game is very, very upset that I stole some spruce needles from the tree. Ah, well. It's so dark right now. I'm just trying to get back to my campfire. That's all I really care about. Ah, oh, my fire went out while I was away. That's a bummer. Also, my spear's almost broken. Damn. Kind of got issues right now. We kind of have problems. Well, I think a good place to start is to continue to try to gather goodies for ourselves. I think a stone hoe is probably a really, really good idea, so we'll start out with that. We now have a stone hoe, which doesn't sound that useful, but I promise you that it is. The hoe is probably the most useful item in the game. For the reason that, you can make farms with it. And the land really likes being cultivated. There we go. The land loves being cultivated in this game. As you can see, our reputation is skyrocketing right now. And that's because we're getting ready to plant. Especially if we go in and we start putting some of these apple seeds in here. So let's say we plant that apple seed right there. Plant that apple seed. Yep, just be Johnny Appleseed up in here. There we go. And you see how high that took up our reputation? This is why the hoe is probably the most important item in the game. Uh, the hoe is important because it allows you to effectively farm reputation, literally. So not just figuratively, literally we're farming reputation right now. And it works out really, really well because lighting one fire or chopping down one tree in this game can be really expensive on your reputation. Come on. Get her done. Wow, I am really bad at botany, aren't I? All right, well, let's rest in our sleeping bag for a minute so we can get our stamina back. Stamina's looking pretty terrible. There we go. We'll finish that off. What I need to do now... Oh, dude, no. Now is not the time. All right. So we took him out. What we can also do is we can repair our spear with our stone hammer that we had on us. Oh, you're still alive? What a jerk. Are you dead yet? All right, be dead yet, please. I require you to be dead. On the plus side, that gives us easy access to dinner. So that's really, really nice. The claw worm should be easy enough to deal with. Plant that real fast. I'm working myself into exhaustion. All right, we'll sleep for a little bit then. Uh, we need to start a fire. That's going to be... We didn't start the fire. It was always burning since the world's been turning. We didn't stop the fire. There we go. So we've got that set up. Cooked warm meat. Boiled off some water. Looking good. 
Uh, let's drink the water the second that we get it because we are like super thirsty right now. I'm also going to eat that worm meat because that's a free fill up right there. That fire should be burning for a little bit. We put a lot of twigs on it, so hopefully it doesn't go anywhere. Uh, we also got some exceptional blades of grass, which like I don't know. Oh, there's another spider over here too. Great. Just what I felt like dealing with. Can you hit him, please? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. All right, we got to get on top of this. Luckily, we have a couple of rat furs. With the rat furs, we can make bandages. And the bandages will heal us for, like, a fat grip of our health when we use them. So there you go. Perfect. We're now in much better shape. And it raises your reputation whenever you staunch your wounds. So... A number of good things kind of rolled into one right there. Our reputation is growing. We're looking a lot better by comparing... Oh, man, there's a rat. All right, let's fight him. He's dead. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Grab some of those goodies off of him so that I can make myself some pemmican when the time comes. Uh, we still need to track down, like, a really good water source is, I think, our main issue right now. We've got fresh water right here, but we're having to walk a really long way to go get it. So, like, by the time we go and we get the water, it seems to me that by the time we go and gather the water, we're already having problems. My suggestion would be that maybe we just make ourselves a still. Might be a better idea. In fact, I think that's probably the winning idea. Let's go ahead and walk back to our base. All right, so we're back over here. Now all we need to do is we need to purify our water. I would like to make some cooked spider meat. I would like to take another run at making pemmican because we are getting better at cooking, so why not? We can make a suture. Sutures are really nice for if you've got a bleeding debuff on you. You can actually suture yourself and fix yourself. It also restores a bunch of HP, and so it's a smart thing to work towards. But now that our reputation is somewhat positive, I actually think I'm going to start working towards sustainability. So I'm going to trade in some of my reputation to mine some stone. And mining that stone... Aw, oh, weak, dude. I was going to say, mining that stone is going to give us access to the ability to build ourselves a still. There are filters on all this stuff, too. If you wanted to, like, search for something, you can do it like that right there. You can make a sandstone water still, or you can make that still. Apparently, I need a pole in order to do that. That's actually super accomplishable right now. So we can dismantle that. Now, we're a little tiny bit overweighed. My suggestion would be that we drop all the grasses... And then there's a lot of stuff on us right now that we should probably get rid of. Uh, let's drop all the leaves. And all the pebbles. There we go. I dropped all my pebbles. We're good. I would also recommend just sleeping for a minute. Just to get some baseline stamina back because we are a little bit overweighed. Uh, this stat will go up as you gain strength from like mining and chopping trees and things of that nature. Luckily, our fire is still burning over here, which is great. It's also on sand. Never put your fire on top of grass because what will happen is the fire will spread and every single tile that gets destroyed by the fire costs you like 100 reputation. And so be careful about that one. I have personally fallen down that rabbit hole. It's not a great idea. It's probably going to be bad for you. Uh, let's go ahead and we will build our still right there. The still is sort of unique in the way that it works. And so with the still, what you need to do is you need to go over here and gather water inside your flask and then you pour the water inside of the still then you right click on this and you say attach container and you'll see it attach right there and then all you got to do is light a fire and then you just wait it out and so now we have sustainable water right we have sustainable water what a place to be uh, the next thing we're going to need is a shovel i'd like to make a kiln so that we can start making more pots for ourselves or, I'm sorry, more jars. If we can make three or four jars that we can carry water in, it'll make our journey a little bit easier and a little bit more sweet. Aside from that, multi-purpose things you should be crafting. Lockpicks are usually pretty smart to make if you've got a lot of bones laying around. So, like, there's treasure chests around, and they're almost always locked. And so having a selection of lockpicks that you can basically just spam at the chest will, A, allow you to level up your dexterity, which is really, really important because it increases your total stamina. And then, B, inside those treasure chests, you can find some really rad gear that will kind of, like, skyrocket you forward in the tech tree. So this is Wayward. I hope you guys really, really enjoyed it. I think this game is super fun. I've been enjoying, like, the hell out of it. I've been playing it a lot in my free time lately, and so 
you know, if you're looking for kind of a hardcore survival game, this might be the one that you want. Oh, good, our metabolism slowed down. Very nice. Sweet. No, that's really, really helpful. That's, like, super helpful. I don't remember how long this still takes, but it does take a while. We're going to have to wait on it. But this is Wayward. I hope you guys really like this episode. I like this game tremendously. I can't vouch for it enough. I haven't really found any problems with the game. The reputation system can be a little bit finicky. It can be, like, moderately annoying sometimes. But it only affects the game in, like, minor ways. And so, really, it's just a conflux of RNG when it gets you into trouble. And it's really not that bad. I will see you all later. Thank you for stopping on in. This is a place where we sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile every single day in the world of indie gaming. So that you don't have to. If you enjoyed this episode and you want to see more, make sure you leave a like on it. It helps me determine what stays, what goes, what stays a one-off impressions video, and what gets four or five videos. But other than that, farewell from the Nerdcast. I'll have something hot fresh for you off the skillet tomorrow. 